so uh next week we're getting all set for new york comic-con it's true and um i don't know i don't think i'm gonna have my phoenix costume in time oh so i don't think i'm gonna be which is kind of um probably for the best <laughs> ride the metro north in red spandex you know it just seems like asking for trouble well for some people that's just tuesday yes but i'm not one of those people <laughs> <sighs> All right, are you ready to do the silly nonsense? Thing. Okay. Pull off street, that's awesome. I can pull off street. I'm fucking hardcore, yo. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible things, brings it on back here in a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And oh, we got a great one to start on tonight because uh, it's ugh, who here doesn't love PETA? Who here doesn't think PETA is the best bunch of people on the planet? Oh, I thought you meant like PETA bread, and I was like, no, I, 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 I dig PETA bread. Animal rights group PETA to launch pornography website. Not a hoax. Not a joke. PETA.XXX. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, no stranger to attention grabbing campaigns featuring nude women, plan to launch a pornography website in the name of animal rights. The nonprofit organization, whose controversial campaigns draw criticism from women's rights groups, said they hope to raise awareness of veganism through a mix of pornography and graphic footage of animal suffering. They're not going to raise awareness. They're going to raise serial killers. Oh, you got to stop your video and restart it. You're, you're locked on the what the fuck face. There you go. As well, I should be. <laughs> you're, you're locked gonna, on a... You're going to mix sexual pleasure with horrifying treatment of animals. And you think the result is going to be people being nicer to animals? No. I... I... No. It's not. I think their intention is to just ruin masturbation for everyone. Ugh. I, I, uh, you, you go. You go. How is that a good... I'm, I'm not even fucking kidding. Like, you're gonna mix sexual imagery like... Boobies and dead rabbits. That's gonna get fucked up in people's brains. And you're going to have a whole new generation of goddamn serial killers on your hands. It's not going to make people nicer to animals. That's going to make people, like, kidnap women and put their head in stocks and spray hairspray in their eyes. <laughs> and get off on it. That's what's going to happen. Uh, because PETA never, <gasps> Peter never shows bad judgment in these things. Ever, never, ever. Uh, this is such a bad idea. Like, yeah, let's just, let's just poke at the subconscious of the porn seeking male and just and fuck him up a little bit and you know yeah you know what buffalo bill from silence of the lambs he was really nice to his dog but he also fucking skinned women and made clothes out of them and that's what you're gonna make yeah, there's a thing PETA tends to lack it's it's a little thing called perspective and uh they, they're not they're, they're, PETA always strikes me as that little kid who thought he had the best idea in the world and jumped off the roof with an umbrella? You remember that kid? No. There's always that one kid when you're growing up who tries to jump off the fucking roof. They've worked in the movies! Was that, that kid you? Hmm? Was that kid you? No. Are you because sure? I would have broken something. You can tell the hippo. No. The hippo does not judge. No, I, I I would have broken something, but still, it's it's that's that's what PETA does. They have these ridiculously stupid ideas, and they think they're the best thing ever. And all of a sudden, you've got you know Roman candle wars and half the neighborhoods on fire. That's what PETA does. Boobs and dead rabbits. I, Brilliant. Just, it just makes me angry. It's such a bad... I, I don't know how you could not understand that that's a bad idea. I really don't. Like... <laughs> well, speaking... Well, this one... Th this is just going to make you plain laugh, hopefully. Because... so. <laughs> this is just made of stupid. 
Man claims invisibility still visible enough for arrest. Uh, Did he take off his clothes? God, I hope Is not. Anyone looking at him? <laughs> Maybe he can only be invisible when no one's looking. looking. Yeah. Uh, from this, can you see me? This this comes from Mapleton, Utah. Utah again. Jesus Christ, Utah. A man told police that he was both invisible and unstoppable after they chased him down Wednesday night. Pro tip, if you have to tell people you're invisible, <laughs> you're not invisible. Uh, police were called about an assault Wednesday and on their way to the call spotted Adam Cowgill's car, the supposed assailant. During the ensuing chaos, police witnessed Cowgill trying to punch the female driver. After being stopped, the woman rushed from the car with a child calling for help. Police arrested Cowgill and there and took him to the hospital to be checked out. There, he informed police of his invisibility and that he was unstoppable. I love the last line of this story. Despite the grandiose claim, Cowgill was later taken to jail. Imagine. Yeah, no, I repeat, if you have to tell people you're invisible... You are not, in fact, invisible. It's kind of like if you get taken down a taser by a taser, you're probably not God. Yeah, I, I, at this point, you know, I, right now, the fact that you're having to say, no, I'm invisible, you can't see me. It's like when, you know, when you're, ki it, again, back to kids again. Nah, nah, you can't see me, I'm invisible. Oh, no face. Fa <laughs> yeah. No fair. You're cheating. Yeah. I'm, I've got, I'm in you can't see me. I totally, like, drank the potion of invisibility. I said that. <laughs> I'm invisible and I'm unstoppable. I called it and you guys are cheating. And I just... How do you get in this position, really? Booze, sir. I was about to say no, but then I, I, I think back to that one con where I found myself... Out behind the hotel, laying down on a bench, screaming to the, all the world that I was, in fact, the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And and I'm here to tell you, yeah. I took eight years of catechism. You're about as far from the Lord Jesus Christ as a person can get without actually being Charles Manson. Thank you. So, you know. Thank yeah. you. No, it's, it's, it's the very, okay, the definition of unstoppable means... You cannot they probably wouldn't get you in jail. Right. The fact that they have stopped you. Yes. There is a flaw in your reasoning there. You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> no, man. You guys are cheating. You guys are dicks. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh. Massachusetts, from your close to you. Uh, Abington, Massachusetts. Uh, Ma Massachusetts officials, sorry for public meeting bra trick. The chairman of the school committee in Abington, Massachusetts is apologizing for a magic trip trick he performed before a televised meeting this week in which he appeared to tear the bra off a fellow committee member through her clothes. Trick was performed Tuesday by Russell Fitzgerald, an amateur magician known to open meetings with a little sleight of hand. It was met with stunned silence. He uh, is, says he is sorry for the embarrassment he caused fellow committee member Ellen Kill Killian and uh, his uh, unwitting accomplice teacher Steve Shannon. He also says he will no longer perform tricks before meetings. I don't think the problem is the magic tricks. No. It's... It's... That, there, that's... There's a time like and place. You get in an argument with somebody and you're like, you know, I really don't like it when you call me a stupid bitch. And they're like, well, I just won't talk anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's all it's... shooting. <laughs> Understand. We're not mad that you did magic. No. You silly fuck. We're mad that you pretended to pull the bra off another committee member. Yeah. Like, they're... Yeah. Yeah, someone in the pull a coin out of her ear, whatever happened to that. Eddie Versetti in the channel calls called it, Where's the sexual harassment panda? <laughs> that makes me a sad panda. Yeah. That's, could you not think for five seconds? Imagine, gentlemen... 
and I use the term loosely because you're watching my show, gentlemen, if in public someone did a trick to make it appear as they had pulled your tidy whities off of you, um, would you be pleased? Well, that depends. Is the magician a chick, and is she hot? <sighs> Let's come on, come on. I would not be. It's, it, it's kind of it's it's t to not get the the just the channel's backing me up here. Not exactly a ringing endorsement. No, there, but not. not exactly. That's not a situation you can really reverse effectively. But I just. You just no. Why? And this is the school board. This guy's responsible for the policies that affect children. Yeah. So they're gonna. Yeah, the 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 kids are learning great things like how to harass and embarrass your coworkers. Awesome. That's a valuable lesson. You're being weird tonight. Am I? I'm sorry. How am I being weird tonight? <laughs> That's not awesome. Well, I was being sarcastic. <laughs> Got one from Florida, Fort Walton Beach. Woman hurls holy Bible at son's girlfriend. A Fort Walton Beach woman is accused of throwing a Bible at her son's girlfriend charged with battery causing bodily harm the younger woman told deputies she had been arguing with her boyfriend's mother when the woman picked up a bible and threw it at her she said the bible struck her in the right eye which was swollen and bleeding when deputies arrived the older woman said the argument was over some of her jewelry it was missing she told deputies she wanted her son's girlfriend out of the house because she was a thief she said she struck the woman in the eye quote accidentally when she swung, swung the book behind her If you're using the Bible as a weapon, you have missed the point. <laughs> well, that, 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 oh, that, that can cover a lot of meanings of using the Bible as a weapon, but when you're physically using the Bible as a weapon... I'll be honest, I feel in any regard, if you're using the Bible as a weapon, you should reread it. Unless it's the New Testament, because some people don't get past that old one. Unless God got on lithium for his bipolar and things got better. Well, unless she's like a vampire or something, then I could see it, you know, you throw it at him. A crucifix is going to be a lot more effective anyway. What if you don't have one? What if you just have a Bible? What if you're in a hotel room? They don't have crucifixes, but they got the fucking Bibles. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's, of all the things to throw at someone... Yeah, that's... Did you ever see the movie Saved? What? Did you ever see the movie Saved? Yes. It, it, I love that movie, but yeah. Mandy Moore does that. Like, throws a Bible at a chick. And she's like, I am filled with Christ's love! Well, no, you're not. It's not a melee weapon! No, nor is it a projectile. Like, no. That's not what you... you I don't care how... I, they're heavy! I get that. They've got heft. You know, like, no. No, no, no. That's improper usage. That's a, that's a yellow card penalty for sure. Like, Jesus just took five yards. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the hand, hand signs for that one. Five-yard penalty! That's five more years in purgatory for you. No. <laughs> Incorrect. I just, it, I... How do you get in a predicament... When you're, how are you in the position where you're flinging the Bible around anyway? It was probably the nearest thing within reach. But still, you got to stop and think about that. <laughs> this is the weirdest image in my head. Go long! <laughs> I don't think it's that aerodynamic. I don't think that would work. You never know until you try. I'm not going to be a part of that experiment. Uh, oh, from Thailand. Yeah, already. This is this this is one of those um, not getting the concept moments. Um, in Thailand, a campaign to purify internet of royal insults. 
Yeah, that... Um, I have to reload the page, because it foobar. Damn you, page, you foobar. Why are you foobar? You make me sad, page. Um, Bangkok, down a maze of neon-lit corridors in a massive government complex, here is a windowless room where the computer technicians scour the internet for photos, articles, Facebook po postings, anything that may be deemed offensive to the king and his family. The technicians work in what's called the Office of Prevention and Suppression of Information Technology Crimes. The government that came to power in July uh, prefers to call it the War Room, and the headquarters of a vigorous and stupid ad in my way. Go away, ad. We don't want you. Um, vigorous and expanding campaign to purify the internet of royal insults. The crackdown, which officials have vowed to intensify, is being carried out by a team of 10 computer specialists, and uh, who's uh, led by uh, Sirachi Nilsang, whose title is Cyber Inspector. Okay. It's the internet, man. It's not a series of tubes. You it's are not... never going to scrub that shit clean. There is not enough bleach in they, a known universe. They done backtraced it. Consequences will never be the same again. Yeah, no, it, that's... That's a losing battle. I know, I just... Apparently, the, the, the whole thing... It's like it, the guy from... You remember the adventures of Pete and Pete? Who at the end of the summer, that Arnie, the strongest man in the world, would beat up the ocean? <laughs> yes! You're beating up the ocean! You're not going to win! Uh, apparently in Thailand they have a policy where you cannot make any insult about the king and his family. Which seems to me... If your rule cannot stand up to insults... Oh, you froze again. Oh. Derp face. Yeah. If you if your if your rule cannot stand up to insult, um, you're doing it wrong. You shouldn't be running a fucking country if if you are if your rule is threatened by someone saying you are a doo doo head. Well, to be fair, a lot of dictatorships have a rule like that. Yeah, but most you know? of them don't try to stop the whole of humanity from saying the shit. Yeah. You got just, ten um, guys. There's six billion of us. It's true. That's that's a tough job. You ever tried to to to? to I'm not to, saying it's a good plan. I'm not saying it's going to work. It's not going to work. You're going to lose. But that's a rule in a lot of like, you know, I don't want totalitarian societies. You know, like the First Amendment isn't exactly a world law. You know, most people in the world don't get to say whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> Well, just, it's sad, but it's true. But you would not have this job if you lived in Thailand. <laughs> think of, to begin with, trying to mod a, a forum, any kind of internet forum to begin with. Just the trouble involved I there. I have trouble modding your channel. <laughs> now magnify that to cover the entire fucking planet. Yeah. That you will not, you, you will going to be playing whack-a-cock. And Every the problem five is, minutes. The problem is, the more internet attention the story gets, the harder those ten people's job get. Yeah, because Something anonymous is going to get on it, and bored teenagers the world over will just be like, "I don't even know who that guy is, but he's a dick bag." <laughs> yeah, the one thing you can't do on the internet is say you can't do that. Yeah, because immediately some motherfucker going to prove you wrong. Yeah, it's true. You shouldn't do that. And on the internet, sort of admitting that you have problems with people not being nice. <sighs> you might as well just wear a shirt with a big old target on it. You can't insult our king! Want a fucking yeah. bet? Yeah. They will come up with new fucking insults. They will devise them. It's just asking to be victimized, really. There's... Go, oh, I just imagine Google Translate. How do you say douchebag in Taiwan? Okay, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Thailand is not a dictatorship. It's a monarchy, which is just as bad. Well, but I'm just saying, you know, you don't have First Amendment everywhere. There are a lot of countries where you're not allowed to speak ill of the ruling class. and That's not going to work anymore. <laughs> 
No, the in there, the, you know, with the internet, no. Can I can I right now say fuck the king of Thailand? Fuck the king of Thailand. You know what? I will not endorse nor he's a dick statement because I don't want to wind up in a Thai prison. I've heard they're really, really unpleasant. Come get me, Thailand. Fuck you. I don't know this person. <laughs> I've never met him. I only know him on the internet. We don't associate. Please don't put me on any watch list. King of Thailand's a prick. Anyway. Damn it. <laughs> Let's move on before you get us both, like, Yay. pulled off to Gitmo or something. Okay, um, you're going to want to brace yourself before you see this picture. Because this is probably... I'm going to put it on the big screen. This is probably the, the saddest thing you will ever see in the whole world. Aww. Just look at that. Look at those poor little... Could we not have blurred out the bulge? Yeah, I know, I know. Man caught trying to smuggle hummingbirds in his underwear. And why would you have the beaks facing your junk? I know. An air passenger has been caught trying to smuggle more than a dozen live hummingbirds in his pants. Tiny birds were discovered hidden in special pouches sewn into the Dutchman's pants uh, in French Guinea. They were individually wrapped in cloth and taped up to stop them from escaping. Airport officials noticed the passenger fidgeting and acting suspiciously. The detain- I wonder why he was fidgeting. Maybe because he was being stabbed in the dick constantly. <laughs> Someone did not think this plan through. No. Um, like, dick now looks like a colander. Good job. <laughs> This is even better. The detainee, who is believed to have a previous record for trying to smuggle tiny creatures, was arrested, but is not known uh, he has been charged. Okay, at that point, that's not... If you have a record for doing this, if you keep doing it, um, you, you, this is not a profession. You're, you're, you're sliding into fetish territory. There. We have a lot lately of people smuggling shit on planes in really awful ways. Like, we had the guy who filled pantyhose with snakes and put them down his pants. Mm-hmm. We had, like, the 400 kilos of coke. Yeah. You can yep. whole digestive tract. Now we have, like, what the fuck, people? Take the train! <laughs> you don't help this fucker! Those uh, poor little what? birds! Don't, don't tie up the poor birds in a makeshift MacGyvered... Because these understand. That's gonna stab- you know what? I don't even feel bad that he probably got stabbed in the dick 400 times. I don't. Because look at those poor birds. Because understand, you're in- the entire time they're in there, they just have a face full of crotch. Yeah. There's, there's no going to the left. There's no going to the right. There's just a face full of crotch. Those birds in a previous life, one of them was Hitler. That's all I can figure out. That's all that, that would make sense for them to be put in this position. Because that, that's it. One of them shot. One of them then, shot Kennedy. One of them was Hitler. I was going to say, who are the rest of them? Cause... One of them is Judas. These are all the most evil birds ever because someone in reality decreed that these birds would... And you shall be stuck in a man's pants facing his junk. <laughs> That that is the fate that you would choose for a reincarnated Hitler, really? Half an hour in a dude's pants? You you don't think we could do worse than that for well, Hitler? Well, no, they're hummingbirds. And half an hour in a dude's pants? No, no, it's it gets better. They're hummingbirds, so time moves faster for them. Because they're all zipping around and shit. So that half hour of those hummingbirds was like three years. It totally makes sense. Don't look at me like that. Look, I'm trying to make sense of why a man would put birds in his in his junk. With sharp. Oh, so is our is our new theory that he knew that he he he, he is an agent of karma. Yeah, that he's some kind of there like, we go Uvo Templar that was gathering up the most evil hummingbirds in the universe to punish them by putting them in his pants to stab him in the dick. There you go. Was he in a past life? I I I, I feel like your theory doesn't hold water. It has hummingbird beak-shaped holes in it. Well, no, it. I'm just trying to make fucking sense of a guy putting a bunch of stabby birds in his junk. All right, well, there's your first problem. Don't do that. <sighs> the 
The second you try and find sense in this shit. How much could those things possibly be worth? That way madness lies. How much could they be worth to justify Me Well, this? maybe they were for sale. Maybe they were like his pets. That's not good training You know what? Them. That's true. PETA should pick this shit up and put it on their new porn site. <sighs> yeah. That's hot. The guy's got birds on his deck. That's hot. And we have our last one tonight. She's erotica, fucko. <laughs> this one, this this picture alone is going to make you sad. Um, it makes me sad just to look at it. Here, let's get a bigger, better look at this fella. This is Clyde Gardner. Oh, he's a looker. And first of all, I have trouble believing this story because this says he has an ex-girlfriend, which means he had one to begin with. I just read the caption on that picture. Yes. Oh, it's get, it's go, we're we're going down the rabbit really? hole here. Really? Man who plotted fake bear attack on ex girlfriend jailed. Kyle Kyle Gardner wanted to kill and skin a bear, dress up in the hide and claws, and maul his ex girlfriend to death. All right. Don't get high and watch the village. While you're mad at your girlfriend. That just seems unnecessary elaborate unnecessarily elaborate. Like, can't you just put antifreeze in her coffee like everybody else? Like <laughs> It's the perfect crime. I'll kill a bear. Then I'll wear the motherfucker, murder her, and no one will know it wasn't a bear. <laughs> it's foolproof. Yeah, I'm getting, now I'm getting flashbacks to the Wicker Man. <laughs> In a bear suit, punching women. I just, I, wow. I, knew, I mean, I guess points for creativity, but damn. Um, let's see. <laughs> he planned to wear the bear hide and claws to attack his ex-girlfriend and kill her, leaving no trace of his foot or fingerprints at the scene of the crime. The woman with whom he had a violent on again, on again, off again relationship and a child. This oh man, God. this man has had sex. This man has procreated. They've bred that poor kid. Put that kid in so much therapy. Uh, she'd recently thrown him out of the house. Uh, Gardner allegedly abandoned the bear plan, however, in favor of a more practical one. Hiring a hit man. Oh, hey, how about that? Not that I support killing your girlfriend, because I don't. If, I mean, if you're having problems with your girlfriend, just break up. Just break the fuck up and go about your business. Oh, Either. this is even Murder worse. is almost never the answer. He was paying for it in installments. Gave his friend $500 toward a $15,000 payment for oh. crashing into Malone in a car wreck, hopefully killing her on impact. If she survived, hopefully. his own... Grand, you better be getting a fucking sniper. He allegedly instructed his friend to take a shard of glass and cut her throat if she survived. That wouldn't look like an accident. No! I love, I love how he, he was trying to put the shit on layaway. I'll pay you $500 now. And play the less list. It's not Kmart! $15,000, the best you're going to get is a car wreck that hopefully kills her, and then something that completely destroys the idea of looking like an accident? Really? $15,000! You, you can get a member of the Gotti family to bump her off for that. And, and, and not only that, keep in mind, that was plan B. Plan A was Bear kill and skin a bear. You know, buddy, at some point, let that shit go. Just break up. Just let that shit go, because when you are, you know, trying to kill and skin a bear, which is a tank made of fur, <laughs> because this is your best way to resolve your relationship problems. <laughs> That's never the best way to resolve your relationship problems, ever. Yeah, if you... Ever. If you there, is, there is... I cannot think of a relationship issue wherein the best solution is killing and skinning a fucking bear and wearing the pelt. I can't. There isn't one. 
He leaves the toilet suit up, seat up. No. <laughs> he cheated on me. No. Uh, he's it's not an answer to these kind of problems. Aw, uh, she's cheating on me. I guess I'm going to have to go kill a bear. Damn. That's going to be a pain in the ass. No. Fuck. That is never, ever, ever the solution to your relationship woes. How is he going to find a bear? Can, do you believe well, this like, guy? This not like they're uncommon. Yeah, but do you believe this... this He's in New York, in, in, in the northeast of the United States. Bears are pretty fucking common if you leave... Like, you know, if you head into but, the woods. Yeah, but do you believe this guy is the sort of planning gentleman who could do it? No. I'm thinking, I'm thinking he's going to be out in the woods with like... If he had tried, the story we'd be covering is man mauled to death by bear, and we wouldn't be covering it because it would seem really mundane. I'm just expecting him to be out in the woods with like half a pack of bologna going, Here, bear! Here, bear! Bear, bear! Come, bear! Got bologna, bear! I Because I'm not seeing this guy. It'd be like those messing with Sasquatch commercials. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Except it wouldn't have a humorous ending. No. It well, I would call... I Am I awful for saying if this thing mauled him to death, that would be kind of humorous? I, I, that's, I am a bit too soft-hearted to wish Aww. for the death of him. Even if they're... Completely well, he was wishing for the death of his girlfriend! Yes, that doesn't make it okay. Like, I was raised Catholic, and you don't do that. I don't care what terrible thing someone's done, I'm not going to wish them dead. I might... Wish them stabbed in the yeah. dick by angry hummingbirds? That's the thing. I, I'm not, you know, I'm, no. I, I wouldn't want to see him mauled by a bear. He's going to get mauled by a bear in prison anyway. Uh, all right, so so what have, what have we learned tonight? We've learned that there are more effective methods of, of dealing with your relationship woes, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if, if you're up to the point where you have to kill a bear to settle your relationship problems, um, just... Take, watch some Dr. fucking Phil at that point. And, you know, we've learned that uh, there are probably smarter ways to smuggle hummingbirds, but you should just not anyway. Um, if you have to say you're invisible... All right, people, don't yell at me about the fact that I was raised Catholic. <laughs> let's not. Let's not get into a religious fucking argument here. Cause, we learned yeah. that we shouldn't do that on the internet. Because, you know, someone will throw a Bible. Which you shouldn't do either. Bibles yeah. are not melee weapons. No. The Bible is not a weapon. Yeah. I, I, I've understood, fuck you, I have a Bible as an argument before, but not as an actual physical weapon. I don't think I understand that as an argument either. Fuck you, I have a Bible? No. Yeah. Um, if you work with someone and you're on camera... Don't pretend to pull off their bra. It's not exactly a team building exercise. We've also learned that violence against animals and porn are not a good, they are not two great tastes that taste great together. One of them isn't even a great taste, but they it's, do not taste great together. It's sort of like one great taste and a and toilet. Something or other. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't mix your porn and your dead rabbits. No one's happy. And, uh... That are, we don't want to know about. And finally tonight, I just want to take a moment to say what we've learned, that the, the king of Thailand is a gigantic prick. God damn it! 